straightforward, upfront, bold, fearless in an approach to everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Pooja Bhatt. The next woman of substance exhibits an outstanding experience of 27 years in the field of counseling, psychological assessment, psycho-educated interventions for children, adolescents, and young. All the ladies, please, round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. What a day to be together. <laughs> Sela, you know, we have heard of the awards. We've heard about people giving you critical acclaim. But when I was chatting with you yesterday, today, there's a deeper meaning to your film. It's not just about the film, right? Was it something which you derive from your own life to say, I'm going to make a film on a teenager who's committing suicide because of depression? Was it your own analogy or was it because you saw someone close to you? How did it start? So the topic of mental health issues has, has affected my family both my extended family as well as my nuclear family. So, I mean, not my, my the family I grew up in, to be clear. Um, but, um, so it, it's something I've always cared about. Living where I live in Silicon Valley in California, we I've witnessed a lot of like the pressures that are put on young people and the kind of suff struggles that they face in trying to meet, meet expectations and live up to the pressures that they are under. And so that was a big inspiration. Um, there was a suicide, there's a whole slew, slew of suicides in Silicon Valley, um, a cluster of 14 in one year. And that was you know, shocking to everybody. And um, right before I started writing the script, there was a girl who jumped off the overpass of, uh, of one of the highways. And she, I knew her actually, I mean I know her very well, but she was an she was someone who was an acquaintance. So it was really, you know, it was really shocking for, for most people what happened there. And um, so that, that really, you know, inspired me to start writing the story. Suchi, uh, you are playing Rupa, the mother of Maya, who commits suicide because yes. of depression. Yes. You know, you are a mother in real life. You've got a 10-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. When you were working on a subject like this, were you picking up tits and bits from your own life and adding it to Rupa? Well, I was uh, just hoping that something like that would not happen in my life and in my daughter's life, frankly speaking. Uh, yes, my daughter is 10 years old and I do see, you know, uh, the pressure that causes uh, kids to go through, um, you know, depression or, you know, isolation, etc. I, I see it in our everyday uh, life as well. I mean, she's in the fifth standard, but this, uh, this need to perform. Uh, Mama, I need to get good marks. You know, I want you to be proud of me. And I said, where, you know, where, where does all of this come from? I'm happy even if you, you know, if you don't get good marks, it's all right, you know. Uh, but they feel the pressure from such a young age. Uh, so when, when this script came up and everything, of course, it did touch a chord. Um, I have been, I mean, I, I, I've not, luckily not had depression, but my grandmother, my mother's side of the family has, uh, has suffered through it, and I've seen it from a young age onwards, what it does to people. So um, uh, I knew about it, per se, but when the film came up, um, I have to say, I mean, I was, uh, the only thing I was hoping and praying is that it would never happen to my daughter. So uh, it really helped me as far as uh, waking up and smelling the coffee and seeing, because we all are in nuclear families. Uh, I'm part of a nuclear family as well. And uh, to know what not to do, uh, you know, to prevent it from actually happening in my family. Uh, Pooja, you've had quite a journey in your life. You've been vocal about every aspect of your journey as well, which I really admire. Have you ever gone through, like Suchi was just telling now, saying now about performance pressure. I have to excel in my films. I've got to excel in every department, which at one point of time made you wake up and say, I'm not happy with life because of performance pressure. Have you gone through that? I've gone through more than performance uh, pressure. First of all, I'm sorry I'm sounding overtly husky today, but I just am recovering from swine flu. Um, You're sounding more basic than I am. <laughs> well, maybe I am more basic than you are, darling. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the point here. The thing is that I think that um, when I first became a director, 
with a film called Pap. Uh, my father, I remember, wrote me a letter on the day of the release, and uh, he said to me, he said, well, Pooja, while you know, this day for you might be the most monumental day, you're releasing a film as a director. And for me as a father, I kind of oscillate between the dread of you failing and the hope of you succeeding. For the world, this is just another day. And there are more people out there in Bollywood who would want to see you fail than want to see you succeed. And if you're surprised by that, then which world have you been living in? This is planet Bollywood, darling. And uh, there is no gratitude in this business. So there's an illusion in people's heads out there that filmmaking, acting, uh, the arts, is a place which is kind of full of highs and you know events like this where we sit in air-conditioned rooms and we're kind of looking pretty. It's a journey that is just laced with humiliation, frustration, self-doubt. Uh, you have to constantly tell yourself that you're worthy because everybody around you is making you feel unworthy. I mean, when we were acting back in the day, when we were modeling, so Jimmy and Sochi go back a really long way, we didn't have the pressure of social media. But we still felt so pressurized by society to be the women that we were. And we were born to mothers and fathers who allowed us to be us. But not everyone has that privilege. And I'm just so glad to be here on this day, sitting with these uh, women to kind of make a film that deals with depression, to deals with things that people don't want to talk about, is such a brave act. And I applaud you for that. Because, I mean, it takes a lot to put your money where your mouth is and your belief. And, you know, people say, but you know, you guys don't make relevant films. I'm like, you don't want to go and do, do you really want to watch our relevant films? And somehow it's left to us filmmakers and to us artists to maybe really steer the world towards like what you said earlier, we've lost our moral compass. We don't share enough anymore. We might be having dinner in the same house on the same table, but we don't know what's passing to the other person's head. So pressure is there. Pressure is there on you from the time you're born into the world. That's if you make it into the world as a woman, either you're kind of, your life is just annihilated before you kind of even make it out because I mean, they prefer a male heir. And then society is trying to kill your spirit. And then you enter a business where you're dissected constantly for how you sound, how you don't sound, the standards of the world. And we buy into it and we fall for it. And this obsession with showing this together face, this happy face, you know, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm not okay. It's such a relief to hear people say that I'm not okay. You know, we don't ask for help and we don't hear each other's silences enough. Which is why they say to know each other intimately is to know each other's tragedy. You know, if I don't know your tragedy, I don't know you. It's when I share with you what your fears are, is when I know you and we live in a world we are comfortable sharing bodies, you know, we're comfortable sharing drugs, but we don't share each other's fears with each other, we don't share vulnerabilities. And for us in the artistic world, it's a dichotomy because if we lose our vulnerability, and if we lose the accessibility we have to our emotions, then we stop being artists of the kind the world wants to applaud. But at the same time, you've got to go out into the world and be in control and show your together face and not be sensitive and not feel anything. So we're constantly being forced to lead this, lead this kind of schizophrenic existence. So to find that balance, I think, is tough. But I think the fact that we're here and we're talking about this is the greatest kind of step forward because you can only confront something when you can acknowledge it. I confronted that I had uh, uh, an alcohol problem by acknowledging I had an alcohol problem. I was deeply depressed. And I thought that uh, the balm that I was using that was alcohol was actually kind of going to take that kind of uh, pain away, it made it worse. And until that time I could actually recognize that about me, I couldn't step away from that. So we all have our ways. Some people deal with depression with workaholic, you know, with work. And as long as you're a workaholic and you're making money for somebody, they don't care about you. But we're all addicts in a way. For some people it's work, for some people it's sex, for some people it's drugs, for some people it's money, for some people it's power, for some people it's fame. So we live in a high stress world. We have tremendous pressure. We feel increasingly more and more alone. We are on Facebook with each other, Twitter with each other, liking each other's posts. Where do we reach out to each other? It's a virtual world. I mean, my friend Subhash, our old friend Subhash Ke Jha, we used to keep telling him, yeah, you have a virtual relationship with people. You're not sitting in front of people na, and touching and, smell and smelling them. Where are we touching and feeling each other? My father supposedly left home when I was a little girl 
according to the world, I come from a broken home. But my father never left home. It was a matter of geography. So you can be in the same household with a supposed functional family, but that family can be the most dysfunctional family. And the supposed dysfunctional family can be the most functional family. It's about being there for each other, hearing each other. Jo hum chupate hai na, mere dost, wo hum hote hai. We are what we hide. And how many of us are really saying what we feel? How many of us are really having a real conversation? So which is why I brought along a little letter, and if the time permits, I would like Suchi to read it. My younger sister, Shaheen, suffers from depression. She, uh, well, she realized that when she was 13 years old. And you know, we confuse sadness for depression, melancholy for depression. Hers is a crippling depression. And Shaheen said, yeah, even I have. Alia was mortified. Alia was like, what's going on? Both my sisters have contemplated suicide. What kind of house am I living in? You know what I mean? But the point is that if you can say these things, you generally don't go and pull the plug. It's when you can't talk. It's like, why is Alcoholics Anonymous popular? Because most people don't have anyone to talk to. So the stigma of depression, the stigma of mental health, the stigma of alcoholism has to go. I remember many years ago, there was a young man who kind of went in with a sickle or a kind of a, just slashed a young girl from the Northeast at uh, Gateway of India. Ironically, it was my wedding anniversary and me and Munna were going to Sri Lanka where the foreign minister was shot. So there was curfew. So everyone's like, Sri Lanka, mat jao, yaar, bhot, bhot, bhot dangerous hai. I land in Sri Lanka and I hear about an incident in Gateway of India in broad daylight. Someone's gone and hacked a girl to death. Why? Because he was suffering from depression. And like even when my father made a movie called Arth, there was a scene where Smita Patel's mother and a doctor approached Shavana Azmi. And there was a very senior actor, uh, Om Shipuri, who had come at that point. And my father said, you're supposed to say in dialogue that she's suffering from paranoia, schizophrenic paranoia. So he said, what are you saying? You're crazy, you're crazy. So my father said, no, you're crazy. This is paranoid schizophrenia. There's a difference. So you see, we kind of tend to sweep things into one bracket and to simplify it, and then I will not speak anymore. We just need to share more, talk more, reach out and hold each other's hand more. We live in a time where we, 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 we don't have a problem. Like I say, we share bodies. We don't form connections. We're frightened of bearing our soul. You can deal with my naked body. You can't deal with my bare soul. That's the problem with the world. And I don't want part of that world. And if I'm supposed to be called mad, I would rather be mad with my truth, as Nietzsche said, than be sane with, my, with, with your lies. So that's where I am. But to finish off, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. We need more work like this. Thank you. Uh, Suchitra, she just mentioned a, a letter which Shaheen had written. Yes. Uh, you have it with you. I'd Thank love you to read it for us. And uh, very thoughtful of Pooja to get it along with us. So thank you so much. I'm just riding off my sister's pain. Oh. See, that's what I'm saying. You know, my father always says, he says, like, you, you know, the, 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 you, the pearl forms because somebody is in great distress and the world calls it art then. <laughs> so uh, this is an article that Shaheen had written. <clears throat> when I woke up last week, I didn't feel quite normal. I felt it almost as soon as I opened my eyes. I wanted to get out of bed, but I found myself unable to move. As the minutes wore on and I lay motionless in bed, I began to notice a dark, heavy feeling that inexplicably had not been there since the night before. I felt weighed down and empty all at once, sad and somehow devoid of all emotion. Negative, toxic thoughts began to flood my mind like poison, and they eventually, over the course of the day, distorted everything good in my life to such an extent that I could no longer see good or even believe it existed. Like always, I scanned my mind for a reason, a trigger, anything that could explain why I was feeling this way. I found nothing. Life was for all purposes, good, even great. But here I was feeling like my whole world was coming crashing down and I had nowhere to go to stop from being crushed beneath it. This time, this feeling lasted a week. The first time I felt it, I was a couple of months away from my 13th birthday. This can't be normal, I remember thinking to myself. I'd recently put on a lot of weight, and the kids in my class had started making fun of me. I attributed the feeling to the fact that I didn't like being made fun of, and the logical solution, and the, and, and the logical solution emerged. Lose the weight, lose the feeling. Over the next three months, I dangerously but diligently ate close to nothing. 
and unsurprisingly, by the time my 13th birthday rolled around, I had lost all the weight and no one was making fun of me anymore. But want to know a little secret? That feeling, that dark, niggling, unpleasant feeling stayed firmly put. That's where my journey with depression began. I now have about seven to 10 episodes a year, each ranging between three to 10 days. They also began a cycle of self-inflicted punishment in the hope that fixing my external world would eventually help fix my internal one. It's an idea I'm still struggling to unlearn. For those who haven't experienced depression firsthand, the idea is difficult to grasp. There is a tendency to confuse depression with sadness. Sadness is a normal human emotion. We have all felt sad and we will all feel sad again. Feelings of sadness are usually triggered by an upsetting event or problem. Once the problem has resolved itself or the event has passed, we usually feel better and the negative emotion passes. Depression is entirely different. It needs no trigger and sadness is just one of its many symptoms. As Stephen Fry once said, depression isn't a straightforward response to a bad situation. Depression just is, like the weather. Everyone with depression experiences it differently. We all suffer in different ways. The one thing that I found remains constant, however, is the feeling that you are entirely alone. Depression is absolute in its isolation. It forces upon you a blackness and loneliness, which ironically, without help, you are usually powerless to escape. For me, it has brought with it a whole host of issues. Along with bouts of crippling sadness, I also live with insomnia, anxiety, and occasional panic attacks. My insomnia kicked in when I was 16 years old, and no matter how hard I tried, or how tired I was, I could never sleep. To this day, going 36 hours without even a wink of sleep is sometimes routine for me. As my symptoms persisted and I took to rarely leaving my bedroom, my family began to notice that something was very wrong. They realized that when I didn't move, it wasn't because I was being a sullen, lazy teenager. It was because I couldn't move. Coming to this understanding was hardest on my mother, who had to watch me lock myself away for years without knowing why. While being depressed is difficult, loving someone who is depressed isn't easy either. It calls for immense patience, kindness, and understanding. As soon as the penny dropped and my mother realized what was going on, she found me a therapist and ensured I learned how to help myself. We should all be so lucky. Last week, while in the throes of a depressive episode, I decided to post about it on Instagram. It wasn't an announcement or a confession, because I've never hidden this facet of my personality. But I recognized that talking about it was a responsibility I had to myself. We spend hours showcasing frivolous, often inaccurate details of our lives, but somehow never talk about the things that matter, who we are and how we feel. When you deny your own personal depression, you deny everyone's depression. You deny the very existence of depression, and you perpetuate the, be perpetuate the belief that it's something that needs concealing. You perpetuate the shame and suffering of so many that live with it. As a teenager, I believed something was wrong with me. I was ashamed of my inabil inability to be joyful and positive while others could. Life had afforded me endless opportunity and luxury, and I felt like I was being ungrateful by being sad. I like, I, like countless others, bought into the myth that being depressed was a luxury. Today I feel ashamed of ever being ashamed. It took me years to learn that the way I felt stood independent of my circumstances. I couldn't help the way I was feeling, and I still can't. The only thing I can do is cultivate an awareness of my condition in myself and those around me, and use the tools available to me to help keep me balanced. I no longer believe that there's something wrong with me. All our lives, we confine and box ourselves into other people's definitions of normal. We all have our own personal normal, and what is normal for me might not be normal for someone else. The truth of my life just happens to be that my normal takes a little bit more work, care, and the occasional sedative. Things the character is feeling, and um, the dysfunction of the family, the expectations, the pressures on her. I think what you were talking about when you're as a star, you know, how uh, visible and public your struggles are. I think a lot of people, even the common average person, has the same struggles. I think yours are just more amplified. So it's, it's amplified. I mean, for example, I mean, to me, it, it, uh, put your mic, please. To me, it never bo bothered me whether I, I mean, I never took myself seriously on the basis of a film being a hit. 
So I didn't take myself unseriously when my film was a flop. I mean, how I looked didn't matter. I mean, it was, I mean, I discovered through the world that apparently I was an attractive woman. I didn't feel that attractive growing up. But it, what amazes me is at the age of 45, I sometimes bump into people in an elevator who've seen Dilhe Ke Mantani when I was 19 and they were 19. And they meet me and they meet me and obviously seeing me triggers of some kind of adolescent kind of feeling that they've had when they've held their girlfriend or boyfriend's hand in that theater for the first time. And then they look at me and they're like, <laughs> so I'm like, that was your fantasy, this is life, deal with it, you know what I mean? So anybody who was probably, took themselves very seriously on the basis of how they looked only, uh, would have probably been a basket case. But when people ask me, I mean, I for example, I mean, I celebrate each stretch mark or each line that appears in my face, but that's life imprinting its kind of mark on me. But that's the way I think, and I'm not against anybody who decides to go for, for surgery. But I'm just saying is that this is what you're dealing with constantly. So you need to know who you are, if you want to be, a, that's why they say showbiz is not for sissies to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Anurit, uh, I, and I'm sure our panelists agree, and friends in the, from the media as well agree, we hear a lot of cases of depression nowadays. Was it always existent? Or is it because of social media or so much of hype around that we get to hear about it more? Is there genuinely an onslaught of a lot of depression happening around us? Yeah, Siddharth. Uh, depression is definitely on a rise. There are many, many factors responsible for it, really. Uh, of course, like my panelists have rightly said, even Pooja did make a mention, we all are becoming more and more lonely. As time is going by, we are very, very sure that we want to be on Facebook, on Instagram, we want to make posts, but we are losing a connect. Our interpersonal connections are becoming poorer. Our support systems are reducing. We lived earlier in joint families. I'm not saying that joint families were very ideal. There were a lot of conflicts even at that time. However, in a larger setup, you could find somebody whom you could connect with, who could sort out certain problems which were daily problems and which now may become bigger ones because you can't share it with anybody. In the nuclear setup, parents are all very busy. They all are working. They are not at home. Children are being taken care of by caretakers. Uh, the media world is taking us into a lonely world where we rather be on our uh, screen than be with others. If given a preference, what do you want to do? You're tired after work. If given a chance to go out, you'd say, I'd rather sit back home and watch something on the TV or be on my laptop. So what happens in that? A disconnect is happening. So emotions are something that we all have, feelings. We're born with feelings, like the girls are saying over here. We start feeling from the day we are born. Do we even recognize our feelings? It is very, very important that we recognize that we have a problem coming up. We are not feeling our normal self. So now what is happening is, in the earlier times, if you were not normal or not feeling normal, there were other people around you in your network who would come to know that. They would recognize that this person's a big extrovert or would talk too much, is not interacting. But in today's time, nobody has the time to see that. So that is why even when I was watching the valley, it is the father asks the friend that are you, uh, was there anything about Maya which was different? Was she, and of course there's a mention of her being a very subtle and a sensitive girl. So when a person is, we all are sensitive but others could be more practical. There are many people who could be highly uh, emotional. So that is, that adds on to us going into, slipping into depression easily because our emotions is something we need to all learn to tackle with. No, but that's because you're dealing with an apathetic world. Yeah. You are told in this day and age that if you feel something, something is wrong with you. The whole game is to numb you, numb you. Why the hell is cocaine so popular? Why the hell is alcohol so popular? Why the hell is pornography so popular? Because the whole idea is to numb you. 
they do not want you to feel society is telling you suppress what you're really feeling say what the yeah. other person wants to you to live hear. like a robo is what is if i don't say what you want you won't give me money you won't give me praise you won't give me sex you won't give me my house you won't give me my whatever yeah so you're just increasingly telling me to the line feel like everybody else fall in line and just be a kind of a mechanical, uh, mechanical. 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 So, so that is why siddharth now it is on a rise earlier human values humans were treated as people who wanted to just be together and enjoy and experience life as it comes today there is a set structure for students for pa parents have set it all up for their children such a high competitive world they have to meet the targets for example i just say very nicely said by you also pooja a father who was always high a very fantastic director lot of expectations already set up not by the parents maybe by society so when you have to meet it up it becomes very difficult for this child to do and i have lot of parents coming to me all the while who are engineers doctors architects scientists and they want their kids to achieve but the kids don't want to be like that so when this comes up this competition it automatically leads you into a situation where you become low and when you go into constant lows it somewhere culminates into a feeling of depression you know a lot of what you said um has there's choice there are choices made in the movie which really address many of of the things you said um one of the things is the, the father is a very successful entrepreneur so his expectations of his children are are really high like you have to reach as high as i've reached the second thing is he's an immigrant and many people told me because it, it's an american movie i made it in america don't put immigrants in there don't put ethnic people in there because you'll you'll be able to you know sell your movie much better and of course being the anti commercial <laughs> person that i didn't do that i put in ethnic people and put in immigrants but one of the reasons was i think it's very central to the story immigrants have automatically built in high expectations of their kids because they've kind of left their home left a lot of their connections and gone to a foreign country you know in order to seek a better life so you know there's built in first of all they're a little lonelier i think i see higher and higher, higher standards, standards yes. so that was part of the story the other thing is he lives lives in the epitome of of technology which is silicon valley and you know right at the beginning you know he says oh he has we had i drew this graphic actually I, with with a guy at the center with all these connections to all these different people and he's saying oh we're all connected because of this technology but i feel in many people many psychiatrists are also saying that technology is actually working against connectivity between people because you know what we used to do like we all put appearances to some degree right it makes it much easier using facebook or instagram or whatever to maintain this appearance of perfection Absolutely. because you you're not showing you're showing like a small sliver of your life right you're not showing the bad days the bad points the bad so so people will look like a lot of young kids or teenagers they'll look at facebook and they'll say oh my god this person has a thousand friends i don't even have five friends yeah. Yeah. you know when those thousand friends are probably there's probably one real friend amongst if that you know so shall so. right now these days we see all these youngsters parents come up to us all the time and they say the main a problem that i'm facing is i'm unable to connect with my kid even when i'm at home i'm unable to connect because they all are on their cell phones yeah, nobody screen needs to time talk versus to you yeah, yeah. <laughs> the kids ask you why are you not allowing me screen time and the parents says i will not allow. that's the major conflict which is on right now but kids prefer that but somewhere the screen time is taking you away from humans actually it's not even right? kids adults too like i've gone to restaurant where i've seen the husband and the wife sitting across from yes. each other and both of them stare at their phone for the entire dinner they don't even look at each other exactly so you know i think it's affecting everyone Parents, so like children. you were saying so that's rightly it's not that depression didn't exist i've lost a lot of my very dear friends and family to depression due to many other causes there were conflicts in the previous years a lot of um, family conflicts a lot of bigger losses however today's reason for depression has changed because here we have a world like we said it's a robotic world that we are moving towards 
and when we are getting so disconnected from each other and not sharing our emotions, obviously depression is going to be on a rise. You know, Suchi, uh, being a mother yourself, do you think it's important for parents to keep a track of their kid's life? Like in Maya's case, the parents didn't even yeah, know her. Didn't, yeah, they didn't know her friends. They didn't know what uh, you know she was going through in college. Nothing. She, they didn't know who her flatmate was or her roommate was. Nothing. It is very important, I think, as a mom. Um, uh, I make it a point to definitely find out. You know, I know my daughter's still only only ten, but you know start as early as possible but to find out who she actually hangs out with all the time who are her closest friends who does she talk to and also not only that not not only the friends when she comes back home to have that little amount of time where you talk to them you talk to them about anything and everything that's happened it may seem stupid and silly to you but it may seem it, it may be really really big for the child you know so uh, uh, to make it a point to give that much time to to listen Listening is the is the main key, and as I said, I mean screen time versus. She actually says that my daughter, when she sees me on the phone, sometimes a lot, she says, "What, mama? Screen time better than FaceTime? People time?" <laughs> and then I feel so guilty. Guilt is another huge big factor, you know, <laughs> for somebody like me. I swear, I mean, Anika, she really comes and says, "What, mama?" And she makes a joke of it, but I feel really bad about it. And you know, it kind of makes me wake up and say, "Okay, okay, keep the phone away." Um, but um, yeah. Uh, Give them enough time to talk about whatever they want to talk about. About uh, you know depression, a lot of it could be reduced if people actually were able to say what they're going through. To not not to not feel that this is you know this is not normal. I shouldn't talk about it. You know somebody else will feel something. Even my own mom uh, may not understand. It is about coming out there and just saying because this is you. What you're going through. Uh, you know, it is you as a person. Whatever it is, it is you. And if if not to your closest family, uh, who who would you talk to? You know, so that's a biggie. I think uh, for families to realize that listening to anything and everything that your child wants to talk about, and not uh, you know just uh, pushing it under the carpet, saying oh that's not important. Uh, because I seriously, I mean, I go back to the point where it really ups uh, upset me or really ma worried me recently when my daughter had uh, you know just exams, and she's nine and a half. She's just about turning ten. And she came and said, Mama, I really want to do well. I really, I said, for what do you want to do well, Anika? No, Mama, because you used to do well in your, you're an engineer, Mama. I said, who, who told you this, you know? Why, why, but why do you think? No, but Mama, then everyone will be proud of me, you know, you'll be. I said, even otherwise, we're very, very proud of you. So where do they get all these impressions from? And if a 10-year-old can, you know, can th this can start affecting her when she's 16, that kind of pressure of because my mom was an engineer and now she's an actor and I want to be that and I want to do exactly that. Um, you know, you never know where that could lead them, which is why listening and just breaking down um, those, uh, you know, silly notions that you've got to, you've got to perform, got to perform. That's one of the main things, I feel. For sure. No, and also, so, I mean, so you to, to be able to tell your child it's okay to fail. It's okay. Yes, exactly. You, you know, you, you you should be applauded for that because we don't say that enough. Yeah, I did, and to I'm our I, own. Absolutely. I mean, I told her. She said, "Supposing I get ten out of twenty-five, I said, supposing you get eight out of twenty-five, it doesn't matter. It's an exam. It's just a test." You'll do better in the next one. So what? It doesn't mean you're any less intelligent than you know than uh, than the other person. No, but so and so gets 24, and I said so. So and so gets 24. You get eight. So what? You get 10. You get 15. Mommy doesn't care. You know, you have to make them feel comfortable. That's so so yeah. important. Also, another very important thing that is coming up as psychologists, we often feel that uh, one, we have nuclear families, smaller families. On top of that, we have one child. So there's so much pressure put onto the child, not only by the parents, by everybody around, because the yeah. child is the focus. Mm -hmm. You see? So the child has an expectation, which as parents we need to bring down to a level that whatever you're good at, that is why we really propagate that you go out or, uh, after your passion, out of your interest, and explore that. I often tell parents that you've brought your children into the world. Are you actually enjoying your children? Or is it just a tension? Mm. You see? Because they come to me, oh, totally distressed. The child says, mother needs counseling. Mother says, child needs counseling. <laughs> so I say, first you sort out who need you both need, actually. So very often when we give the counseling to the parent, the child is fine. And like you said, we need to track our children, where they are going, whom they are meeting. But we cannot be inspectors on their heads. Right? 
but till a particular age like suchita is saying younger ones you need to monitor more adolescents yes but they conflict a lot with you so you have to do it from the back and once they are adults we have to learn to trust them and leave them and they then build a rapport where they become your friends and they want to come back and talk to you yeah i i have a 21 year old and a 16 year old girl and um one one thing i realize is they're both vastly different I mean, whoever has this nurture versus nature debate didn't have children because, you know, they're born coming out of the womb. They're so different, I think. And um, one thing that you ha I feel you have to make them believe is that you accept them for who they are. You know, you don't have a cookie cutter model of what you picture them to be, and that's that's all you'll accept. You know, whatever their strengths, their frailties, you accept them. And if they fail, you accept them. It's, it should be unconditional. They have to feel that unconditional support. I, I think that's that's really key. And acceptance has to come even from your peer group. Your peer group, your teachers, very many times, see, we deal with a lot of special needs children too. And th these are the kids who lose their self-confidence very easily. They're the ones who lose their self-worth very easily. So it's very important that friends also build on a relationship with uh, the child or your uh, co-mate so that you really tend to connect. It's not necessary that always it happens with family. Right. They may have very special friends, cousins, yeah. siblings, even and in the movie. Whether the sibling came to know or not, siblings play a very, today Pooja has yeah. come so close to her heart, a letter from her sister, because it really matters. I mean, I, I lost my parents very, very young. And today, to me, my siblings are my major support system. If they were not there, I wouldn't be like this today. So it's very important to see whom are we seeking help and whom are we connecting with. And one of the things I show in the movie is, um, and I hate to say this, but we Indians are not very good at being supportive as a community. <laughs> when, you know, like if there's any kind of failure, we kind of tend to point out and sort of seek joy in other people's sorrows, you know? And that's, that's really sad, and especially it's worse in the immigrant community because you have this hyper-competitive group of people. They're all watching each other's kids and how they're performing, you know? And there's a scene actually where, you know, the, one of the moms is making fun of the fact that Maya only got into Longview State College or whatever because that's a big deal. Like every kid, they all know each other's SAT scores or their test scores and, you know, all the parents will know the other kids' test scores and they're comparing and... It's just, it's a, it's a lot of additional pressure and negativity for the kid, you know, who's kind of struggling to find their place in the world. So it's one of the things that Indians could do a much better job, I think, is being a supportive community um, than we do. No, I, have, I have to second that. With, but every, every time I went outside the country for a concert, when I was younger and, and more reckless, I would have these young people come up to me and say that, you know, we relate to you so much because you speak our language unlike most of the other actors who don't speak our language. And they said the problem that we are having is our parents are stuck in a bubble and they're wanting to force feed us these kind of Indian values. At the same time, they want us to go out there and compete with a white person or a black person or somebody in the West. So what we are meant to be outside in office or in college or in university, we come home and we've got to kind of regress. So you're forcing your child to kind of lead this double existence and it's okay. So I think that there's too much that we brush under the carpet as society, whether it's depression, whether it's sexual abuse, whether it's addiction, whether it's a female infanticide. And as a society, we need to kind of wake up and talk about it more because if not, this whole thing is going to crumble like a pack of cards because I think Indian spirituality is seeming as bogus in this day and age as most other things. You know, I mean, I'm sorry to say I was in Russia recently and I, saw, I experienced more spirituality in a strip bar in Russia than I would in most places of, of, of worship in this country. And there's something more dignified about a woman who sits up there and decides to sell her body out of choice as opposed to the kind of hypocrisy that we lead on a daily mass-based level. So I think it's really about us having a really good look at ourselves as society and telling each other that somewhere we failed ourselves and each other because we've lost that bond. We've lost that human connect. And what is that human connect? To understand that, hey, the other one feels as much self-doubt as I do, is as vulnerable as I am, is as fearful as I am, and just kind of reaching out, holding hands, and bleeding a little bit together, yeah. And, and understanding the normalcy to go through fears 
anxieties, low feelings. It's okay. We are not pagal. We are not crazy. And even if we are crazy, I often say we psychologists are crazy. I mean, we are pagal. I am. I to say, I my, my who, children tell me. Who do, <laughs> my children often. Who do you say, guys go to? Ha, we also take when friends. you're depressed, who do you go we to? We also take seek help from our friends. <laughs> See, it's because it's very important to go crazy. My kids often tell me, Mom, you're turning crazier as you're growing older. So it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, I like that. It's okay not to be okay. Yeah. Well, talking about that, uh, I'm going to open it with our friends from the media. We'd like about two, three questions to be thrown at our dignitaries. Um, you just need to lift your hand up and you can shoot your question. Pooja ji, it was very good in which you told us about depression. My two questions are that we see that in our film industry, there is a lot of topic in our film. We saw that you were watching a lot of attention. The first one is that the trailer was how it felt. And the other one is that the Mami Film Festival is going to be shown in the Mami Film Festival. So, what do you want to see? And you want to see that there is more film in our film industry, which is the same as you have given Jia Khan's example. तो मैं ये कहूँगी कि I think कि ये बहुत ही एक brave शख्स हैं जो यहाँ पे बैठी हैं because it's not आज के दौर में फिल्म बनाना ही इतना मुश्किल काम है कि you have to be a masochist to do that and then to go out there अभी हम ऐसी बातें कर रहे थे कि एक तो फिल्म बनाते हैं उसके बाद में जाके आपको impress करना पड़ता है आप लोगों को बोलना पड़ता है कि हमारी बातें जो है जरा please audience तक पहुँचा दे जरा शिद्दत से ताकि कोई आके एक टिकट खरीद ले तो वो जो है ना ज़्यादा मुश्किल होता है फिल्म बनाने से but that's why in this day ने जब भी हमारे focus commerce पे इतनी है to make a film like this with put your money behind it to put your money where your mouth is I must say it's not easy and I think तब कभी-कभी कोई पागल औरतें ऐसी काम करते हैं that you need to be slightly crazy and and a woman to be able to do this but I think we need more of this जैसे for example I mean मैं एक example दे रही थी अर्थ के बारे में बोल रही थी एक scene जैसे स्मिता पात्र का जो character था अभी वो परवीन बाबी के के real life एक crisis पे based था so in fact just today आज world mental health day पे किसी ने एक छोटा सा एक promo बनाया था involving भटसाब and उसमें परवीन बाबी का उन्होंने example use किया है तो भटसाब ने मुझे message किया and said कि can you imagine we never thought at one time that what is supposedly the tragedy of our life will be used so many years later as an example to get people to understand what the element is तो जैसे रोग मैंने बनाई थी एक film इरफान खान के साथ में और that was before Angelina Jolie kind of you know focused her her gaze on him. So India had not woken up to Irfan Khan's sexiness yet. But उसमें वो एक पुलिस ऑफिसर का रोल प्ले कर रहा है और पहला जो सीन है फिल्म में it opens with a man who's sitting in front of a psychiatrist और वो बोल रहा है कि कल तो मैंने सोचा कि मैं अपने आप को मार डालूं खुदकुशी कर लूं मगर नहीं किया क्योंकि मुझे लगा कि मेरी जो मेरा जो assistant है होली था तो उसका होली जो है बर्बाद हो जाएगा तो he's very matter of fact about it and वो police officer है हर दिन वो बहुत ही bleak circumstances और situations के साथ deal कर रहा है तो क्यों जी है भाई उसका एक ये thought है so I think कि एक तो हमें ये चीज निकालनी चाहिए हमारे दिमाग के जहन से कि ये जो है ना लोग सोचते हैं हिंदुस्तान में कि depression जो है यार वो एक अमीर अब आप अमीर हो तो आपके पास ये मतलब ऐश और आराम है कि आप आप depressed हो सकते हैं हमें तो जाके काम करना पड़ता है it's not something that is only restricted to the elite or the rich or famous सबको होता है यार सबको हो सकता है सबको कब सबको है you know I mean who is तनहाई जो है अगर आपने महसूस नहीं किया तो आप जिंदा ही नहीं हो मेरे दोस्त I don't think that is possible for you or not to feel lonely at some point of your life so I think that हाँ मैं most certainly ये सड़क two हम बना रहे हैं सड़क two जो हम बना रहे हैं संजय दत्त को ऐसे एक दौर में पकड़ रहे हैं जैसे वो आज के दौर में हैं तो we are dealing with the issue of depression मगर commercial film बना रहे हैं बच्चे दिया हम तो yes we have to make our point but we have choose a canvas जैसे हम बातें कर रहे थे कि why didn't she make a documentary out of this but I think जब भी आप एक mainstream format को इस्तेमाल करते हैं आपकी बात कहीं कभी ज़्यादा आगे पहुँचती है because you kind of normalize it so I applaud this and I am all for that's why I'm here uh, I'm here to support these women. I think that it's it's a very very brave decision. And I think कि हम सब को अगर हम जब भी देखते हैं और हमको लगता है कि कोई बात है तो फिर हमारा फर्ज बनता है कि हम इस फिल्म के मैसेज को आगे कहीं ना कहीं पहुंचाएं। अगर लगते हैं कि बात नहीं है मत पहुंचाओ। मगर दिल से करो वरना मत करो यार।
बिकॉज ये फिल्म जो है जो मैंने देखा ये दिल से बनी है यू नो दैट्स वे वी कैन सिट एंड टॉक लाइक दिस सुचित्रा जी एंड सैला जी आप लोगों से एक आखिरी सवाल जानना चाहेंगे कि आ, 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 स्क्रीन पे हमने देखा कि इंटरनेशनल लेवल पर फिल्म को बहुत ही सराहा गया ढेरों सारे अवार्ड भी मिले हैं इस फिल्म को लेकर तो इंडियन ऑडियंस को लेकर कुछ प्रेशर फील करती है इंडिया में ये फिल्म जरूर चलेगी जहाँ पे भी आप रिलीज करो जरूर चलेगी क्योंकि सबको उठ के देखना ही पड़ेगा कि ये आपकी फैमिली में भी हो सकती है ऐसा नहीं है कि ये फैमिली यूएसए में है सैन फ्रांसिस्को में है सिलिकॉन वैली में है तो वहीं पर होता है uh, नहीं स्टैटिस्टिकली uh, आप बोल सकते हैं कि हाँ यू नो वन आउट ऑफ नाइन अमेरिकन ओवर द एज ऑफ ट्वेल्व ऑन एंटी डिप्रेशंस यू नो विच इज अ स्टैगरिंग बट दैट हम लोग बोलते हैं अमेरिका में नहीं यहाँ पे भी होता है यहीं पे यहाँ पे भी होता है तो स्टोरी चाहे वहाँ पे सेट uh, किया गया हो लेकिन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट लोग रिलेट कर सकेंगे क्योंकि हमारे बहुत सारे हम हम सब अभी मॉडर्न फैमिलीज में हैं आई नो दैट माई पियर ग्रुप मेरे मेरे जनरेशन के जो uh, लोग हैं अगर ये देखेंगे तो आई नो कि लोगों को थोड़ा झटका मिलने ही वाला है ऑल्सो अवेयरनेस की बात है हमारे हिंदुस्तान में अवेयरनेस नहीं है कि जैसे अब्रॉड में ये बोल रहे हैं कि एंटी डिप्रेशंस लोग खाते हैं उनको पता है कि इफ देर इज डिप्रेशन वो चले जाते हैं साइकाइट्रिस्ट या साइकोलॉजिस्ट को मिलने यहाँ आने के लिए इतना मुश्किल है लोगों को दैट इज़ वाई अवेयरनेस ये मूवीज़ के थ्रू ही हो रही है एक फिल्म आती है ऐसी जो साइकोलॉजिकल uh, बेस्ड होती है इतनी अवेयरनेस हो जाती है कि बहुत सारे पेरेंट्स एंड यंगस्टर्स एंड अडल्ट स्टार्ट कमिंग फॉर हेल्प एंड सॉरी व्हाट्स नाइस इज द वे दैट सेला हैज मेड द फिल्म इट्स नॉट यू नो शी इज नॉट ट्राइंग टू पुश द टॉपिक डाउन पीपल्स थ्रोट्स इट इज रियल it is real it's a, you know that's very realistic i mean the festivals that i've been uh, to and uh, people who have seen it have come up to me saying this really could be happening in our family it is not you know uh, put uh, making the world look at it through rose tinted glasses it's real and that's actually, what people need to actually, see actually i had a screening um where there were a lot of counselors educators teachers and many of them came after and said this is so realistic and actually i was a little nervous because you know you you want that's your goal but you don't know if you've reached that goal right so when when all these i saw these the audience i was really worried but many of them said oh no this is so realistic this this is exactly how you know i've seen so many families like this so uh, last Jenny, question <coughs> sala how um, how did you uh, come up for the cast how you selected the cast the cast uh, i have to say she's brilliant in the movie um <laughs> that, that is why we are asking that was you. very very hard actually because i was looking in the us at i started in the us i had a casting agent and many of the male especially the first person i cast was the, was the lead actor the male and uh many of the males are typecast into these comedic kind of roles over there you know the, the american males of that age group so i didn't want a, co a comedian you know because you can't take him seriously it's a very very heavy role and i wanted somebody who could play that whole range like he has to be this really you know uh confident competent ceo type and then he has to be very vulnerable at the other end of the spectrum so he has to be play that whole range you know so i looked and looked and looked there and i didn't like anybody and then i found ali actually through imdb believe it or not but i did a search and i i i saw him and then you know he sent me a tape and he just blew it away you know and then i started looking for the for the lead actress and i used uh, nandini shrikant who's a local uh, casting agent here in mumbai and she um, she suggested uh, suchitra and suchitra just blew me away i mean she ha she gives a, such a beautiful performance in this movie it's it's just um it's really worth seeing thank yeah, you no she gave me the the two most difficult scenes uh, one was a six page scene and one was a five page scene uh, and i had to do that for my audition and uh, as she says i nailed it so i got it <laughs> okay last question no, no, uh, mr chetan no, no, no. uh, pooja uh, with time uh, do you think like uh, people from the film industry are coming up with their problems like even miss dipika padukone also ca came up with this uh, her problem uh, do you think there is there has been a change uh, in uh, with time yes and no uh, it's it's i mean i i come i come from lineage where we never waited for time to speak our minds 
इट वॉज आई वॉज वन यू बॉन्ड टू महेश भट यू स्पीक योर माइंड इट्स इट्स जेनेटिक फ्लो तो हमें तो कभी ये प्रॉब्लम हुआ नहीं इनफैक्ट ऑपोजिट प्रॉब्लम था बट आई थिंक इट्स वंडरफुल टू हैव वुमेन लाइक दीपिका इज वंडरफुल वन माई सिस्टर शाहीन हु इज अ सिबलिंग ऑफ टूडे आलिया एंड डॉटर महेश भट सिस्टर पूजा भट टू कैंड कम आउट एंड स्पीक अबाउट दिस बट आई डू फील दैट वी नीड टू हियर पीपल इन द पब्लिक आई हु आर इन मेन स्ट्रीम बॉलीवुड speak more about concerns uh, that really really affect us i think that we are living in a time where young people especially are so manicured and they are so correct uh, politically uh, there's never a hair out of place there's never a quote out of place and i think that uh, somewhere along the line when i today at 45 when i go to places and people ask me why aren't you acting again i say why do you want me to act yeah you can look at 25 other women who are much younger than me they like no we related to you so like my father said to us he said beta jab 26 saal ke baad ab aapke gaane bajenge na tab wo melody ne kahin na kahin heartland mein kahin jaake ek jagah banayi hai so i think that do are we bleeding with our stars enough because they're not bleeding with their audiences enough you're only presenting your best face to your audiences to your fans and your audiences love you more your fans love you more when you show your human side to them when imran spoke about his son's cancer he kind of somewhere really really made a place further in his fans hearts than he had before by just merely entertaining them deepika seems more human more identifiable because she talks about something that a lot of young women out there probably deal with so i would think that i would like to hear uh, people today who are ruling the roost be a little bit more open about their frailties because eventually our frailties are our strengths so chitra par aisa nahi lagta aapko ki jab jab log samne aate hain fir wo aajkal social networking trolls shuru ho jate hain ye sab cheeze to log sahem jate hain bahar aane mein well that's just it i mean you can't uh, you can't live your life uh, thinking about the trolls on social media that's why i i'm i am active but not totally active and you can't uh, you really can't live your life dependent on them otherwise you're not living uh, you know yeah, exactly. uh, yeah you're not uh, it it is up to you to live your life the way you want to be true to yourself uh, if you want to talk about it great just talk about it don't be scared about anyone or anything because who died and made them the judge you know who died and made them god to give opinion that you shouldn't say this or we We can exactly or besides ki agar ek ek shakhs wahan pe baith ke anonymously sirf matlab gandagi aur matlab ye phaila raha hai to kitna dukhi insaan hoga yaar wo to agar hum samne wale ko matlab humanize kar lena jaise log bolte hai ki sensor board re sensor board to insaan se hi bana hua hai na koi matlab bahar se matlab aasman se to aadmi nahi aaya hai na wo bhi dara hua hai yaar ki meri naukri chali jayegi agar main sign kar lunga तो सब लोग तीन साल आगे सब 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 सबको खुद के प्रॉब्लम्स होते हैं ह्यूमेनाइज ईच अदर अंडरस्टैंड कि वो ट्रोल बेचारा इधर किसी के पेरोल पे होगा या बहुत ही तकलीफ में होगा या उसका ग्रामर बहुत बुरा होता है मोस्ट केसेस तो तब मैं तो आई डोंट इवन रिस्पॉन्ड कि अगर मैम ग्रामर नॉट सी आई एम सॉरी टू से दिस अगर आपका ग्रामर सही नहीं होगा मैं आपके साथ आग्यू नहीं कर सकती हूँ सो आई मीन दैट वॉज मैंट बी अ जोक यंग मैन डोंट लुक सो सीरियस सो आई एम दिंग इज दैट ट्रोल की जगह जरा आप अगर जाके बैठे और सोचेंगे कि ट्रोल जो है बेचारा कितने तकलीफ में होगा एक्चुअली अपनी जिंदगी को कितना मतलब छोटा समझ रहा होगा कि सिर्फ वो आपकी जिंदगी को फॉलो कर रहा है और सिर्फ नेगेटिविटी फैला रहा है बड़प्पन चाहिए ना तारीफ करने के लिए किसी की बुराई करने के लिए मतलब वो तो कोई भी कर सकता है यू नो यू नीड यू नीड दिस इज आई मीन लव इज एन एट्रीब्यूट फॉर द करेज नॉट फॉर द वीक so being able to stand by step back praise the other you need to be a large human being for that sab sab ke muh se tareef nahi nikalti hai dil se to bilkul nahi nikalti hai okay last question chaitanya anga please director shaila uh, valley represents a geographical depression between mountains did you have that symbolic uh, concept in mind when you titled this exactly you yeah. you're the only one who picked up on it though <laughs> oh give it up for him ladies and gentlemen this is why i say we need to rewind and go back 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 to the days when people read more into things that they should have <laughs> all right uh thank you so much ladies and gentlemen before we sign off a few of our friends came in a little late so i'd love to show them the trailer once again please uh like i said earlier as well 40 so, may, may i ask you a question that's purely commercial sure. i want to know how much did it cost you to make this movie and how many days did you shoot it in boy that's a that's she intense. shot it in exactly 21 working days 21 you're kidding days. me no. the entire movie was shot in 21 see maine sahi sawal pucha ki nahi 
And what, but I'm sorry, but I mean, what, 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 what kind of budgets were you, have you worked with? It's less than a million dollars, let's put it that way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and this is in locations around, uh, you know, not in like one place, one set, no. Locations. Uh, we were shocked, me and Ali were completely shocked. We said, so, what? In 21 days she's finishing this movie because it's a, you know, it's an incredible movie. But Kudos. Really. I, I, I'm still tired, let's put it that way. <laughs> No, but that's amazing. Yeah, that's for amazing. The first time and, and I think that, that just proves that, that, yeah. that proved that your inner landscape was so you, you you just knew what that was, which is why you could kind of create it yeah. like that. So, and we feel very good making movies for seven point five crores and in forty five fifty days yeah. to <laughs> learn from you. <laughs> okay, so we'll have a look at the the, the trailer, trailer right now yes. once again. Thank you, everybody. Ladies thank and gentlemen, fourteenth for October. Thank you so much. Do you want to tell them something about yes, the premiere? Yes, fourteenth uh, uh, October at uh, Juhu PVR is the screening. Uh, uh, and 15th as well at Juhu PVR um, uh, will be the premiere of, uh, of The Valley. On the MAMI uh, website, you can find more information as regards tickets, etc. Passes and tickets and what have you. So please, please, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here goes. Here's the trailer. The trailer once again. I think you should move in here. Yeah. A little bit about the film. Uh, for those who didn't haven't seen the trailer, tell the audience what would you like to tell them about. Okay. Um, so the valley is about uh, an, immigrant, an immigrant entrepreneur in America, and uh, he, he uh, his daughter, he, his uh, life looks very ideal. He's, he's made it, he's successful, and then uh, his daughter, younger daughter, goes away to college and she commits suicide. So he and it totally shocks him because he's he's disconnected. He doesn't understand what's going on in her life, and so he tries to find out what happened. And uh, so it follows his his journey, his trajectory, you know, as he's searching for answers. So, uh, so uh, when you thought you, like you have to make such kind of film and uh, like such strong concept, uh, when you thought you have to make such kind of strong concept, so the idea came to me almost eight years ago. And uh, it's, it happened during this whole cluster suicide issue that happened in, this, in Silicon Valley. There were a string of suicides, one after the other, all in one high school. And it's supposed to be one of the best high schools in California, in the whole America, actually. So it, I was just thinking, why is this happening? And at the same time, I was raising my two, two children, so and kind of seeing what they're experiencing. And so that's when I thought of the story. And then... Many things happened in, in my life. I had a brother who, has, who had a mental health issue, and um, he passed away, actually, right before I started writing the script. And th that just all that pain that, that I was feeling at the time, I think it went into the script. And so, you know, it became, he's, his ca he was a lot like the character Maya, like very, very, very sweet, very nice person, you know, really innocent kind of person. So. It's his character kind of went into this other character for me, morphed into Maya for me, you know, I think. And so those two things made me write the script and uh, was the impetus behind the movie. So how does it feel like you're part of this movie? Like it's damn beautiful, we have seen the yes. trailer, and like it's really touched to our heart. So yes. how does it feel? It's, in, it's incredible. I mean, when I first uh, got the script to read, when I first spoke to Sela uh, on Skype, when uh, she decided that I was going to do the movie. Then itself I knew, when I, I spoke to her for the first time, I knew that she was a very sensitive uh, person, you know, and you knew that any, any film that she would end up making, uh, I knew that she was very sensitive, top, topic bhi sensitive hai, lekin hi sensitively ye, uh, address the topic, but she was very sensitive to address the topic. So I was very happy that I've been given uh, the, the role of Rupa, which is the mother, which um, there's a whole gamut of emotions, uh, obviously. There's a lot of guilt, hai, uh, you know, she, she feels a lot of guilt because she doesn't have enough time for her daughter. She, doesn't, she thinks that she's not uh, been in touch too much with her daughter's life. 
uh, the daughter finds out she's having an affair? Is it because of that? You know, all of that. So, um, um, a nice range of emotions for, for Rupa's character. So, um, and ultimately, when we went to the States to shoot it, uh, Ali Khan, though I've known for 16, 17 years, so it was very, very easy to, to act with him uh, as my husband. The other two, the, the other two actors uh, she has got as the daughters, uh, Salma Khan and Agnita Thakkar, who plays Maya. Brilliant, brilliant actresses. One is from LA, one is from New York. And what a sensitive actress, the girl Agnita, who plays Maya. It, we learned a few things from her. Frankly, there were times when Ali and me were discussing and saying, my God, we wouldn't have analyzed that the way she has. So her casting was absolutely brilliant. So it was wonderful to be part of it. <laughs> नहीं अवेयरनेस तो होगा एक तो मैं इनको मुबारकबाद देना चाहूँगी बिकॉज़ आई थिंक आज के दौर में जब ही न्यूज़ भी एंटरटेनमेंट हो गया है फॉर अ फिल्म मेकर टू चूज़ टू मेक अ मूवी अबाउट अ टॉपिक लाइक दिस इज़ वेरी वेरी ब्रेव सो आई अपलोड यू एंड आई अपलोड माय फ्रेंड सुची फॉर काइंड ऑफ पोरिंग अ हार्ट आउट इन द ट्रेलर दर आई सो आई थिंक डिप्रेशन के बारे में मेंटल हेल्थ के बारे में एल्कोहलिज्म के बारे में हम बातें नहीं करते हैं और एक बहुत ही यूनिक परस्पेक्टिव होता है जो अभी एक फेमिनिन uh, परस्पेक्टिव आप सुनते हैं और लड़की भी जो जब जिसकी मौत है एक यंग गर्ल की सुसाइड होती है सो आई थिंक दैट दैट इन इट सेल्फ इज़ वेरी यूनिक आई थिंक दैट इट्स समथिंग दैट वी मस्ट सपोर्ट जब मैंने अपनी फिल्म करियर एज प्रोड्यूसर शुरुआत की थी मैंने तमन्ना बनाई थी जो फीमेल इन्फेंटिसाइड पर थी उस टाइम पर मैंने मीडिया uh, के लोगों को फ़ोन करके कहा कि मैंने देखो दिल से शिद्दत से एक फिल्म बनाई है इस ऐसे टॉपिक पर जो मेरे लिए बहुत मायने रखती है अगर आपको लगता है कि इसके अंदर कुछ भी सच है तो प्लीज़ मेरा मैसेज जो है आप आगे बढ़ाएं। तो मैं उनके बिहाफ पे ये बहुत ही शाये होगी अमेरिकन भी है आदि तो मांगेगी नहीं ऐसे ऐसे मैं उनके बिहाफ पे आप सबको बोल रही हूँ क्योंकि अगर आपको लगता है कि कहीं ना कहीं आपने अपने खुद की ज़िंदगी में आप इस दौर से गुजरे हैं जो भी आपको भी तनहाई महसूस करना पड़ा आप भी अकेले अपने आप को महसूस किया आपने आपको भी डिप्रेशन हुआ है तो प्लीज़ इस फिल्म के मैसेज को आप आगे बढ़ाइएगा क्योंकि हम बातें करते हैं ऐसी फिल्मों के बारे में मगर देखते कुछ और हैं हम बोलते हैं कुछ और हैं और करते कुछ और हैं जो हम छुपाते हैं वो हम होते हैं तो आई थिंक कि ऐसी जब एक फिल्म बनती है जब भी हम आज के दौर में जब भी सोशल मीडिया पर हम कुछ और चेहरा दिखा रहे हैं और एक्चुअली अंदर कुछ और ही हैं ऐसी फिल्म की ज़रूरत है एंड वी नीड टू अपलोड दिन इक्कीस दिन में फिल्म बनाई है अभी जान लोगे क्या आप लोग <laughs> जान लोगी ऑडियंस आई थिंक वी मस्ट गो आउट एंड सपोर्ट दिस बिकॉज इट्स समथिंग दैट नीड्स टू बी स्पोकन अबाउट मोर अवार्ड मिलेगा तब जब हिंदुस्तानी ऑडियंस भी जाके इस फिल्म को देख के एक टॉकिंग पॉइंट बना देगा ऑडियंस हमेशा स्मार्ट थी हम जो सपोजिटली फिल्म इंडस्ट्री के जो एक्सपर्ट्स हैं हम काफ़ी ऑडियंसिस को अंडर एस्टिमेट करते हैं और कहते हैं कि वो तैयार नहीं है बात आज ऑडियंसेस और फिल्म मेकर्स के बारे में नहीं है बात प्रॉब्लम आज एक मार्केटिंग का गेम हो गया है कि आप कितनी भी अच्छी फिल्म बनाएं क्या आपके पास ऐसे बजट्स हैं जो कभी कभी एक बहुत ही बड़ी मगर वाहियात फिल्म के पास होती है जो वो आपको मतलब सुनामी की तरह ड्राउन आउट कर दे इसलिए आप सबकी मदद ऐसे दौर पर मैं बिना झिझक के मांग सकती हूँ क्योंकि अगर एक कमर्शल फिल्म बनी थी जहाँ पर हमारा या इनका एक ही एक यू नो गोल वॉज के ओनली टू मेक मनी देन आई वुड बी आस्किंग दिस आई थिंक कि अगर इस औरत ने अपनी खुद के पैसों से एक ऐसी सेंसिटिव फिल्म बनाई है ऐसे ऐसे सब्जेक्ट पे जिसके बारे में लोग बात नहीं करते हैं और हम इस मैसेज को आगे नहीं लें तो फिर लानत है हम सब पर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच प्लीज़ फटाके ना बजाएं अपनी 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 दुनिया में अगर कोई एक्चुअली रियल लाइफ फटाके हों उन्हें प्लीज़ सेलिब्रेट करें फटाके जलाएं ना सर अब अपने रियल लाइफ फटाके को सेलिब्रेट करें बस वो तब रिलीज होगी जब भी मेरे जो पार्टनर्स हैं श्री भूषण कुमार जी और श्री ब्रेव जी फेयरली और ट्रांसपेरेंटली मेरे सारे वर्कर्स के पैसे रिलीज कर दें मेरे कॉपीराइट को वायलेट ना करें तब रिलीज होगी वरना नहीं रिलीज होगी थैंक यू थैंक यू